Hey, good Monday morning, everybody. BAM Weather Meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a long-range forecast update as we work into the month of October. Two days left in September. And we're working right into the midst of the harvest season. Overall, guys, pattern continues to look very mild ahead. We'll talk about a couple of cold fronts we're keeping an eye on and uh, the overall implications for the forecast as a whole as we work throughout October in this video update today. Hope, hope that you all had a fantastic weekend. Let's get right into the forecast here, guys. You can see next seven days going to be very dry across the eastern portion of the country outside of the far southeast coast as some of the outer bands of uh, Tropical Storm Imelda will impact Eastern Florida, the Carolinas, Georgia as we work over the next couple of days. But if we go down and look at that forecast, you can see the trend has been further south and further east pretty consistently, though uh, Imelda now forecasted to get up to a Category 1 storm as it heads out towards uh, Bermuda here. You can see Hurricane Umberto, Category 4 major hurricane right now, will also curve to the north and to the east away from the U.S. coast. Uh, these storms trended closer together. Uh, specifically, Imelda trended quite a bit slower, which is allowing for a greater interaction between the two storms and ultimately Umberto pulling Imelda further off to the east and away from the east coast of the United States. Uh, this has been one of the most challenging, if not the most challenging, hurricane forecast uh, that I've done here in the past several years. Model data struggled with the interaction between the two storms uh, and the upper level low in the United States. So just a lot of moving pieces with that forecast, but ultimately good news that these two stuck closer together and ultimately uh, as a result will pull further away from the east coast of the United States. Uh, but, get in, but again, if we go back further to the north and to the west here, guys, you can see uh, with these two storms further to the east, it pulls moisture away from the eastern part of the country. It's also very warm. We're under a ridge of high pressure. Really little precipitation expected across the eastern portion of the country outside of the southeast over the next seven days. We will start to see some more moisture opportunities as we work late this week and into next week across parts of the northern plains. You can click around and see. Uh, should start to see rainfall opportunities increase for the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, and Nebraska. Would not be shocked if maybe there's some slightly wetter trends across northwestern parts of South Dakota into North Dakota as well, especially as we get into next week. And that will really be the theme as we work ahead. You know, the pattern's going to be mild, better rain chances the further west that you go. Taking a look here at the overall high temperatures over the next seven days, let's look at this. High temperatures today up into the 90s across parts of South Dakota, Illinois, Indiana, uh, all the way down through the Gulf Coast. So much above normal temperatures, including a couple of record-breaking warm high temperatures today in parts of Iowa, South Dakota, and Minnesota. And we'll see more of the same over the next several days with those temperatures continuing into the 80s Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday here, guys, it's just persistently above normal as we start out the month of October. Uh, you can see more record-breaking warmth possible into Friday. We will have a little bit of a front that we'll need to keep an eye on as we work into early next week. You can start to see those temperatures trend a little bit cooler, but still, October 5th in the 80s for the Eastern Ag Belt, continuing to run substantially warmer than normal. Taking a look at the overall pattern progression ahead, here's a look at the temperature anomalies that we'll be dealing with as we go throughout this week. You can see uh, substantially above normal temperatures, 15 to 20 degrees warmer at times across the Midwest as we go throughout this week. Then we start to push in this cold front as we work into early next week. Would not be shocked if data trended a little bit cooler, a little bit faster with this front, going to continue to lean slightly cooler than model guidance in the week two time frame. But it's not going to really matter in the grand scheme of things in terms of how we average out. Temperatures will continue to average out much warmer than normal because, because you can see right after this front, the widespread warmer than normal temperatures just return and really there's no change to it all the way through the second week of the month. Taking a look at the front as we work into the 6th or 7th, 8th of the month or so, somewhere in there. The AIFS model trying to see a very brief, a very brief cool down to below normal temperatures in parts of the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes into the middle part of next week. I don't think that's off the table. Would potentially open the door for some frost potential in parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes, let's say through this area in here. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be widespread and even this model is very brief with it. It's a quick shot of cooler air behind the front and it goes right back to the warmer than normal pattern. Now, that is really the main 
cold front that we have in the forecast ahead. We've got one on the east coast as we go throughout this week, but in terms of the ag belt, this is the main one to watch over the next couple of weeks. In terms of the overall pattern all the way through the middle part of the month, guys, taking a look at East Asia, it's done well as of late favors this ridge of high pressure and this warmth for the central to eastern United States continuing. I really don't see any major pattern drivers right now that disagree with this idea of a warmer than normal pattern persisting. We'll have some fronts here and there, but in terms of the big picture, I think mild air is going to win out in a big way as we go throughout the month of October. And if we take a look at data to support this idea, this is the latest CFS weekly between the 12th and the 18th on the top and then the 19th to the 25th on the bottom. That is a substantial warm signal persisting through the middle part of the month on this particular piece of model guidance. And if we look at the monthly data, it's very warm as well. In fact, take a look at the trend. It has trended consistently warmer over really the past nine days here with this latest outlook in the bottom right. You can see it's forecasting substantially warmer than normal temperatures across the northern plains, upper Midwest, and into the Canadian prairies. But really the majority of the U.S., averaging out warmer than normal. I want to talk a little bit about the culprit of this and what it's going to mean in terms of our uh, final outlook for October because we do have a fresh October outlook for you later on in this video, one of which is the IOD forecast. It's the Indian Ocean Dipole. It's measuring the ocean waters in the Indian Ocean, dropping substantially negative. This is a very La Nina-like, but it's also one of the most negative values that we've seen in several years. Traditionally, when you get this, you get very warm as we go throughout October. Taking a look at these lowest years that we had in terms of the IOD dating back to 1998, you can see much warmer than normal conditions forecasted across especially the north central part of the country. Now, this particular analog set has the core of the warmth a little bit further to the west than what the data looks like the next couple of weeks. There's another factor that I want to add in here, and that's our global winds. Taking a look at our global wind forecast, number one, I want to make the note, we verified this period in here where it was trying to dip to like minus 1.25. It got as low as minus 2.25. And so the verifications have been actually quite a bit even lower than what the forecast data is. And if you take a look at what the forecast looks like ahead, it's dropping below minus two. It's not out of the question that we could have one of the lowest global wind values to start out at October on record, uh, getting down to minus two to minus three. And if we take a look at the lowest years over the past 30 years or so, you've got years like 2017, 2007, and 2005. Very warm as well. The only difference compared to the IOD analogs is that core of the warmth here, you can see the difference, is just a little bit further to the east and maybe even a little bit more notable. And so you blend these ideas together and you factor in maybe a couple of our overall analogs as well. Here's what the blended idea looks like. And I like this very well. I think this is a very good indication of what's going to happen into October. It matches up pretty closely to where we're going to be the first two weeks of October with the much to extremely above normal temperatures across the upper Midwest the Great Lakes, and maybe parts of the Northern Plains. If we take a look here, here's how we average things out for October as a whole. We did add in an extremely above normal area across the upper Midwest. I think that there is support for that from analogs. There's support for that from data. If there's ever a time to use it, especially considering the fact that some of these areas will be 10 degrees warmer than normal the first two weeks of the month, it's going to be in here. And again, that's situated over parts of Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. We're slightly cooler than some of the analogs in the Western Plains. I think that if there are fronts that come into the picture, based off what I see out in the North Pacific, it's probably going to be in this area. Maybe some more ups and downs. And I did note a slight cooler risk of the forecast in here based off of that particular signal. Regardless, it's a very warm look. For October. In fact, our forecast, our update here, 195, that would be the third warmest on record behind 2024 and 1963. And so uh, rivaling some of the warmest years on record for the month of October uh, based off of the current forecast. In terms of precipitation, guys, uh, with the idea that maybe the core of the warmth is a little bit more in here, versus further to the west in here, we did trend the forecast and the analogs a little bit wetter. This would set up the opportunity, especially if we get some fronts in the northwest plains, for moisture through this area in here. Would still be a big dry signal down across the south central and the southeastern United States and into parts of the eastern ag belt, uh, but I do think that there's an opportunity, probably especially into the second week of the month and beyond, that the plains and into the upper midwest can be a little bit more
active. It's not a soaked signal, it's not a super wet signal, but there is maybe a better opportunity for rain to work in here. The idea is that these storms kind of move through the mountain west and then curve up into parts of the northern plains, and we're already kind of seeing that in the extended range data into the week two time frame. And with that in mind, here's our outlook for October. Again, leaning drier than normal for the eastern ag belt, I think as a whole. I don't see a major change in that idea. The most dry conditions down across the deep south, the Tennessee Valley, and then along the Gulf Coast. Certainly concerns about maybe river levels again, continuing to drop throughout October in these areas and drought conditions expanding. In terms of heating demand, October's are really our first notable heating demand month of the summer. So from an energy perspective, I wanted to note this, uh, looking at 2025 in here as uh, the second warmest of the past 25 years, only behind last year, uh, 2024 at 195 compared to 187. And so rivaling some of the warmest years on record, it's not out of the question that this year could end up as the warmest October on record. It's going to certainly be up there rivaling 2024 and 1963 uh, as, again, the warmest on record. Uh, guys, that's all I have for today's forecast. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. We'll have more updates as we go throughout the week.